Okay, so we're going to wrap this up, uh, this discussion of uh, uh, hybridization by talking about the last hybridization that I want to introduce to you, and that is SP hybridization. Okay, we're going to use that to explain uh, bonding environments in which carbon is forming two connections right here, and those connections form 180 degrees, uh, an angle of 180 degrees. Okay, so actually, uh, uh, looking at uh, IDSDs and what we've seen from SP3 and SP2, you should be able, on your own, to come up with uh, the mixing rules, how many orbitals mix, and how many natural orbitals don't mix, and so forth, and come up with a balance bond uh, theory diagram for that molecule. I actually encourage you to pause the video right now, and don't wait for me to tell you how this is done. Try to do it on your own and see if you can actually uh, find a solution to this. Okay, I'm going to assume that you have already done that. All right, this is the uh, uh, electronic configuration of carbon uh, after the promotion step. In SP hybridization, what we actually do is, well, we're going to mix this one S orbital, the two S orbital, with one of the two uh, P orbitals. In this case, I'm going to choose arbitrarily uh, that to be uh, the two PX. So what you're actually going to have is that, well, since you have two uh, atomic orbitals mixing, you're going to generate two uh, hybrid orbitals, okay? And we're going to call those SP. So the orbital electronic configuration is going to be like that. You're going to have an SP orbital, another SP orbital, which we're going to call one and two, with one uh, electron each, and then you're going to have two of the two P orbitals, which are natural. They have not uh, hybridized. And each one of them has just one uh, electron. Okay? Now, the question is, well, uh, how, how do the combinations between S and, and uh, 2PH orbital have to be so that we actually find that the angle between the uh, hybrid orbitals is 180 degrees? Okay, so it's actually not difficult, and again, uh, you should be able to actually uh, do this on your own. Uh, you're going to have that, well, this is just going to be the normalization constant. Uh, uh, that's actually uh, not, not very important on what, what that number should be. Uh, it's actually the square root of 1 over 2. And then you're going to have this is going to be the first combination, and that is going to be the second combination. Again, the, the normalization factor is very important. But this is something that you should actually have come up with. Okay, let's see why combining the S plus the 2PX and the 2S minus the 2PX is going to give you two orbitals that are uh, uh, anti-parallel, okay, or forming 180 degrees. Well, let's do the first one. Okay, that it will be uh, the 2S orbital, and we're going to say that that is the 2PX orbital, where the direction of the axis is positive in that way. When you mix this two like that with equal coefficients, you're actually going to have an orbital that looks like this. All right, that's the positive side of the orbital, and then you're going to have here a negative side, uh, which is going to be a, a, a tiny, a tiny little. We're actually not going to be talking about signs for the hybrid orbitals, even though they're important in, in forming these uh, uh, combinations. Okay, so that will be the first uh, uh, hybrid SP orbital. Okay, well, what about the other one? Well, this other one, the only thing that is going to change is that the orientation of the 2PX orbital is going to be change. It's going to be like that, right? So when you, when you examine how this combination is going to look like, then you find that uh, this is going to look something like this. Okay? That is the other SP orbital. Okay, so notice that the direction of these orbitals are actually, again, anti-parallel. Okay, so they are 180 degrees uh, to each other. And uh, if we were to actually draw now, these two hybrid orbitals that are pointing in opposite directions along the same axis with the uh, uh, unhybrid 2PY and 2PC orbital, then we will get how the orbital structure looks for a carbon atom that has undergone uh, SD hybridization. Okay, so let's actually uh, draw all those uh, together. Okay, so that carbon atom is going to look like this. This is uh, one of the uh, SP hybrid orbitals, and it has one. Uh, electron. This is the second of the two sp hybrid orbitals, okay? And it also has one electron. Notice that these are not the same orbital, okay? This looks like the shape of one of the 2px orbitals, for example. But there are two different orbitals, okay? These are not two lobes of the same orbitals as they are in the natural 2px or 2py orbitals. These are two independent orbitals, and they actually have these densities at the other side, uh, uh, but again, this is quite important, okay, and each one can hold one electron. All right, and we still have uh, the uh, unhybridized orbitals, which I'm going to draw like this. That will be uh, the 2PY, and it also has one unproelectron, and then you'll have the 2PC coming in and out of the plane, okay? 
Okay, and so I'm going to draw like this. Two PC coming in and out of the plane. All right, so the question is, well, how is this uh, ion going to combine with the rest to form acetylene? Okay, so uh, we're going to do that using Van Zandt theory. We're just going to look at uh, overlaps between atomic orbitals and see how this would be resolved. Well, we can actually look at uh, this product molecule first, and you can see that, well, if a hydrogen atom comes here, uh, the one S electronic wave function actually can overlap right there, okay, to form a sigma overlap. Okay, so we have already uh, established that. Now the other carbon atom uh, is going to be like this. Okay, so you're going to have one sp hybrid orbital pointing this way, which is perfectly suited for a sigma overlap with uh, this other sp hybrid orbital from the other carbon atom. Then you're going to have another uh, sp hybrid orbital which is pointing in the opposite direction and that has one um, and per electron. And then you're actually going to have that, you still have the 2PY orbital, which has one and per electron, uh, again 2PY, and this will be the 2PC orbital, okay? Which also has one and per electron, okay? Uh, it's not difficult to see that uh, the overlap with the one is electronic wave function of that uh, hot inner right here is going to give rise to a sigma bond or a sigma overlap. And then notice that you're actually going to have these natural uh, 2px and 2p, uh, sorry, 2py and 2pc orbitals available for bonding, right? You actually have that there's only two electrons total, so you can have here a pi overlap uh, like this, okay? And another pi orbital uh, overlap like that. Okay, so you have that, uh, there's a nice explanation of the triple point, right? You have the triple bond between these two carbon atoms is formed by uh, one sigma overlap and two pi over overlaps. The sigma overlap is formed by uh, uh, the overlap of two sp hybrid orbitals, and the pi overlaps are formed by the overlap of the uh, unhybridized natural 2py and 2pc orbitals of those carbon atoms. Okay, so this kind of uh, finishes with what I wanted to tell you about hybridization. Notice that you can actually still apply this to other atoms in the periodic table. So uh, oxygen atoms can also undergo hybridization. Nit nitrogen atoms can also undergo hybridization. And, and a question that you, many of you might have is, well, how do I tell by looking at a molecule what type of hybridization do I need to invoke uh, uh, in order to explain the bonding? Uh, and the solution to that question is, is, is can be difficult, but, but we're going to use the following uh, uh, tricks. You just have to look at the geometric environment around the carbon atom, okay? So if the carbon atom has a tetrahedral environment, that means that the hybridization has to be, SP, has to be sp3. And the same thing would happen for uh, oxygen and nitrogen and other atoms. If you actually take a look at the, at the uh, uh, geometric environment and see that the carbon is planar and it has three bonds that are 120 degrees from each other, then that would be sp2. And if you actually find a situation in which you have something like this, in which the carbon is actually, actually has two connections and they are 180 degrees from each other, then you can explain that uh, bonding configuration successfully uh, by invoking sp hybridization. So, so, so those are kind of the tricks that you have to determine what type of hybridization you're going to uh, invoke to explain bonding in various uh, molecules that contain carbon. Okay? Okay.